Jimi Hendrix is pulled in different directions by those who want to make him a star. But he has other troubles that threaten to end his dreams before it starts. I want my music to go in, inside the soul of a person. You know, it's, for me, it's colors. I, I want people to feel the music the same way I see it. Fighting his demons, he tries to make it to superstardom without tearing everyone around him apart. In Jimmy, all is by my side. Hi, I'm Sean. I'm here with Salim and Leah, and we're going to talk about Jimmy, All Is By My Side, the film about Jimi Hendrix. We've all just seen it. Leah, were you all by the side of this film? I was very pleased with this film, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. We capture one year in the life of Jimi Hendrix, which I think was a brilliant way to go about doing this, and it's the year just before he takes off and becomes a superstar. <laughs> it doesn't fall into a lot of the pratfalls that I think many biopics fall into, meaning you have to service way too many things in a two and a half hour movie. Uh, Get On Up being a prime example of that, with that tries to cover way too much in a person's life. Exactly, and then it becomes a concert movie. Then it becomes about watching these performances, which is fine for what it is, but I like that this is about 12 months in his life. Mm -hmm. It's actually done so well, well that I'm not actually missing um, any any bit of his life as a superstar. The only thing that I really wanted to see is him at Woodstock. But other than that, I was I was like, I, I know I know this guy. I don't need any more. Yeah, I mean, I do think that that one of the things about the movie that's kind of a little bit strange is in the first 20 minutes, it doesn't really seem like it's Jimmy no, it Hendrix's story. It right. seems like it's Linda Key's story, mm -hmm. um, who was Keith Richards' girlfriend, sort of discovered Jimi Hendrix, and she's the one pushing the plot along. Mm -hmm. She's saying, I gotta I gotta make you a superstar, I gotta get, put all these people in front of you. And sort of it's only when she kind of exits the picture right. that it becomes Jimi Hendrix's movie. And so I thought it got off to a little bit of a strange start. Did Linda tell you what to play? No, she just said play. So, I mean, I've heard pretty much everything there is to hear, and uh, I've got to say, you know, you're taking it, you're tearing it apart in your hands, man. Eh? Jesus Christ, no one's got your sign. No, no Jimmy, no. you're not really one for commitment, are you? No. no. Well, what do we think about Andre Benjamin's performance? I, you know, I don't think he's going to go win any awards, but it's because less that's less because of him, and it's just not a juicy performance, and I don't right. know that the film is going to get that much of attention. Exactly. But, I, you know, it's hard to imagine anybody really playing Jimi Hendrix better. Right? Yeah. It's still crazy to me. Like, all these acts going to be on stage. He's Simon and Garfunkel, Otis Redding, Jess Joplin? Come and on, you? man. Can... Yeah. <laughs> hey, can you believe that? Yes, I can. We have Imogen Poots and we have Haley Atwell. I think both of them are fantastic. Haley Atwell, I remember from Captain America, so I actually didn't realize it was her until the end of the film, but I think that's a testament to her that she just fell into the role so well. I feel like every time Imogen Poots is in a movie we review, I gotta talk about how great she is. I, she's wonderful. I think she should be as big a star as Jennifer Lawrence. She's just waiting for that breakout role and she hasn't gotten it yet. All of the performances by the women in this film, the, the three main female characters performed by Imogen Poots, Haley Atwell, and Ruth Nigga are fabulous. Their characters are very different, yet they're all young and beautiful, and they serve different functions in this man's life, and none of them outshone each other. I mean, they did a really good job of, of interacting with each other. Keith wrote Ruby Tuesday for me when we broke things off. Got all these men writing songs to me. And then I go home and I listen to them alone. What is it with you rock and rollers? You can perform for a thousand people and you can't be honest with one. And I guess we can attribute really great performances to the director. Let's talk for a minute about John Ridley. I think so. As a, as a writer, and I think certainly uh, with his performances, there's, there's a lot there to like. I do think some of the stylistic touches he makes are strange and almost as if they're just trying to call attention to themselves and don't really serve a purpose. I mean, I don't know why we, every single time a character is introduced, we have to freeze frame. Yeah. And why we sometimes have to see people, um, they're saying stuff, but we don't see their mouth move because the dialogue is not being sunk with the picture. It's, yeah. It's just kind of like, I don't really know what you're trying to say all the time. He's making more of an art house film here. Yeah. Um, he's adopted a very kind of Italian neorealist style where the storytelling is really kind of emerging out of kind of a setting, 
mm -hmm. and an environment. And it's it's clips and snippets and segments and things are assembled in a way that is not seamless. I, yeah. I mean, I, I eventually kind of came around to it, but I didn't necessarily understand it. Right. Um, you know, I like the stylistic changes. I like that it was different. I like um, the integrated file footage and it had a, it had a lot of energy to it. You know, it, it it struck me as something that I had not seen before, not just with the story, but it, even in the way that it was directed and edited and shot. There's a bit of a hallucinogenic quality. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, then you know, you can say what you will about that, but I certainly when you're making transitions between scenes and we're sort of like but in the clouds yeah. almost literally. You're right. But, you know, it's but, hallucinogenic. You're right. But, no, I, but now, I, I didn't think about that, but you're you're totally right. And I think that's it's all done on purpose. It, it, it creates the atmosphere of the time and the setting. Jimmy Allah's By My Side is a bit long and a bit hazy, purple hazy, but Andre Benjamin and John Ridley make this a compelling film, so I say see it. Jimmy All is By My Side is a fascinating look into a brief period of time of this genius man's life. I say see it. Jimmy All is By My Side is unlike any biopic I've ever seen with a phenomenal performance by Andre 3000. This is a movie I definitely want all by my side. See it. Cheers. Cheers. Come over to let you. Jimmy take over. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I get it. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah.